Now that you know a little bit about the basics of coding, I'm going to show you some variables that are built into GameMaker Studio. Depth sets the depth of the instance. This is how far or how close it appears to your computer screen. Think about it like looking down a well. The further down the well your instance is, the more positive the number is, like positive 1000 would be deep into the well, or far away from your screen. A negative number would be closer to your screen, or higher up the well. This variable is read and write, which means you can use the value of depth and read it and use it for something else, or you can write to it specifically by setting the depth. For instance, you can say depth equals 10. Of course, you can use the depth text field inside your object properties window, but this allows you in code to constantly check and change the depth of your instances while the game is running. Direction is the direction of the object's motion in degrees. A circle has a total of 360 degrees, and since direction uses degrees, it will be a value between 0 and 359.9. 360 is the equivalent of 0, which in GameMaker means that your object is facing to the right. If your instance is looking up, it's 90 degrees. If you're looking to the left, it's 180, the opposite of 0. And if you're looking down, it's 270. Like depth, direction is both read and write, which means you can get the value of direction and use it for other functions or other variables, or you can specifically write to it in your code something like direction equals 90 to set the direction or facing of your instance. Friction works in conjunction with the speed of an instance. Friction is a value that will be subtracted from the speed of your instance every single step until it's no longer moving or reaches zero speed. As an example, if your speed is 1, which means you're moving one pixel per step, and your friction is 0.1, GameMaker will subtract 0.1 from your current speed every step, making it 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, until it reaches zero and you're no longer moving. This gives the illusion of friction. Friction is read and write, which means you can read the value of this variable and use it as you wish, or set it by writing to it in the code, something like friction equals 0 0.1, and then it will apply every step. H speed and V speed set the horizontal speed and vertical speed of an instance of an object. Horizontal speed affects the x-axis of your instance. A positive number will move to the right of your screen and a negative number will move to the left of your screen. But for v-speed, a negative number will move up on your screen and a positive number will move down on your screen. For example, an instance that has an h-speed of positive 3 will move 3 pixels per step to the right. And these values are both read and write. ID is a unique identifier for an instance. When it's created in your room, GameMaker gives it a very specific number. This is read only. You can't manipulate this number yourself, but you can use it to your advantage by reading it. As an example, when one instance collides with another instance, you can get the collided instance's ID, check to see what that is, and then use it for other reasons. You can then manipulate the code of that one particular instance by using its ID, or you can check what kind of instance it is based on its ID. Image alpha is the transparency value of an image. This is read and write, and it starts at one and ends at zero. One being 100% opaque, and zero being completely transparent or see-through. You can think of it like a percentage. 1.00 is 100%, 0 0.50 is 50%, 0, 0.00 is just zero, which means you can't see it. You can use this to manipulate how transparent your instances are so you can see other pixels behind your instance. You can even animate this by continually decreasing the alpha of an instance until it reaches zero to make it look like it's faded away. Image angle is the current angle at which the instance sprite is drawn. Similar to direction, image angle uses degrees, and this is the degree at which your sprite is drawn on your instance. An image angle of zero is neutral. It'll look exactly as it did in your sprite's resource folder. Then you can start increasing or decreasing the angle to see your sprite rotate. 
This, of course, is only rotating the actual image of the sprite on your instance and will not affect the direction or angle of your actual instance. But you can put them together by making your image angle and direction be the same and make it look like your image is rotating as your instance rotates. Image index is the current sub-image being shown for the instance sprite. You can read from or write to this variable. Reading image index will show you the current sub-image your animation is on for your sprite. Or you can write to it and set which image index you want your sprite to be showing. This can be useful when you're not animating your sprite at all, but you want to select a specific sub-image to show from your animation strip. As an example, the first sub-image for your sprite is zero, and then it increases from there. When GameMaker reaches the end of your sub-images, it'll loop back to zero and continue to animate. Image number will return the number of sub-images of an instance sprite. As an example, if your sprite has six sub-images, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this variable will return the number 6. Of course, this value is read-only, as you're not allowed to increase or decrease the number of sub-images inside your sprite. If you need to change the number of sub-images in your sprite, you can do that from your sprite resource folder. Image speed sets the speed of your animation. This is the speed at which the image index is changed. The value of image speed denotes how many sub-images will be displayed per step. As an example, an image speed of 1 means that one sub-image will display per step. If you wanted two sub-images to display per step, you would have an image speed of 2. If you want to slow down your animation, you can use decimal numbers. If you use a value of 0.5, you would show one sub-image every second step, which means it would look like your animation is taking twice as long to loop. You could almost think of it like percentages, where 1 being 100 is 100% speed. It is exactly equivalent to your steps, where something like 0.5 is 50%, half of your steps, so your animation will happen half the speed you expect it to. And you can drop that to 0.25, you can drop it to 0.1, whatever speed you need for your particular animation. Image X scale and image Y scale are responsible for setting the horizontal and vertical scale of your sprite for this instance. Image X scale is responsible for horizontal and image Y scale is responsible for vertical. The default value would be 1. This is 100% or a 1 to 1 ratio of what your sprite looks like in your sprite resource folder. If you want to make your sprite twice as big, you would use the number 2, 3 times as big, 3, and you can use decimals in between. It simply allows you to change the horizontal scaling of your sprite or the vertical scaling of your sprite. Solid is a simple variable. It's read and write. It's a boolean, so it's true or false or 1 or 0. And it's just a flag that toggles whether or not this instance is considered solid. It works the same way as the checkbox for solid in your object properties window. The only difference is you can manipulate this while the game is running. Just in case you wanted something to become solid during gameplay or not be solid during gameplay. Speed is simply the speed of the instance of your object. This is in pixels per step, but the difference between speed and something like H speed or V speed is speed has no direction. You will have to set the direction of your instance in conjunction with speed. As an example, you could have direction 0 with speed 3, which means your instance will move 3 pixels per step to the right, or you can set your direction to something like 45. Now your instance is moving to the top right of your screen at the value set with this variable, speed. Similar to H speed and V speed, this variable is affected by friction. Sprite height and sprite width will return the height of the currently assigned sprite for this instance. The value that is returned is in pixels, and it is dependent on your X and Y scale for your image, which means if your sprite's native height is 300 pixels, but you have taken image Y scale and given it the value of 2, meaning it's now twice as tall, sprite height will return the value 600 pixels. This is read only, and it's returning the pixels that this sprite is taking up currently in the room, which is why it's affected by things like image X scale and image Y scale. However, if you did need just the unscaled version of the height or width, you would use the function sprite get height 
sprite get width. Sprite index is the index of the current sprite for your instance. This is read and write, and it will return the value of the order number for the sprite resource in the sprite dropdown folder in the resource tree. If you want, you can use this to manipulate which sprite is being shown for your instance. As an example, the current index for your sprite could be sp underscore player, and after it collides with an enemy, you can change the sprite index to sp underscore explosion. This is just a simple way of checking which sprite is currently being used for your instance, and to change it to a different sprite for your instance without actually changing the instance or object. Sprite X offset and Sprite Y offset will return the X or Y component of the sprite origin. This is simply the value of the origin you set for your sprite in your sprite resource folder. As an example, if you set 16 and 16 as the origin for your sprite, then Sprite X offset will be 16 and Sprite Y offset will be 16. However, these are dependent on your X and Y scale. So, if you, for example, doubled the size of your image, meaning that your X scale is now 2 and your Y scale is now 2, the Sprite X offset and the Sprite Y offset will also be multiplied by 2, meaning that the center or origin is now 32 and 32. If you want to get the unaffected origin or offset for this sprite, you would use the function sprite get x offset and sprite get y offset. Visible just sets the visibility of the instance. This is whether or not GameMaker should skip the draw event for this instance. If it skips the draw event, obviously your instance will not be visible and you won't see it. This is a boolean, which means it can be set to true or false, one or zero, and it's similar to the checkbox in your object property window. Just be careful, because when this is set to not visible, zero, false, you know, you did not check the checkbox, GameMaker will be skipping your draw event. So if anything is written inside your draw event that is vital for this instance to work, by setting it to not visible, none of that code will run. X and Y are very simple variables. They are the position of the instance in your room. X is a horizontal axis and Y is a vertical axis. This is read and write, so you can check where your instance is in the room, and it's based on the origin point of your sprite. You can also write this value, and it's commonly used to manipulate the position of your instance in your room to make it appear as if the instance is moving. You can say something like x plus equals 5, which means every step your current x value will increase by 5. This will make it look like your instance is moving 5 pixels to the right every step. x previous and y previous are the x and y position of your instance one step ago. So if your instance is moving, let's say, 5 pixels to the right per step, and your current position is 300x, well, just minus 5 from that, and your x previous was 295. Simply, it's a great way to get the previous x and y position of your instance, which means you're getting the x and y position of your instance one step ago. The last two built-in variables I want to show you are x start and y start. This is just the starting x and y position of an instance. So right when the instance is created and the room starts and everything, wherever your instance is, that's the x start and the y start. And it's not just a read value, it's also a write value. You can write to this variable, which means you can say when the room starts or when this instance is created, you can set the x start and y start to a particular value. And that's where your instance will start when the room starts. This could be important if you want to put your instances back to where they started at any time during your game. <laughs>